lizards in Texas are just bigger. <laughs> hey, welcome to Coffee and Tools. This week I'm going to open up a box. I uh, got something new from Harbor Freight with a coupon. So let's talk about what we've got and let's show that coupon. So this week at Coffee and Tools, uh, I've got me I've got a nice blade sharpener from Harbor Freight. The cost of sharpening my blades right now has exceeded about $60. And I got a coupon uh, in my email box from Harbor Freight, 20% off. So this thing here cost me $47. Not a bad deal. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll go pick it up. Now, be warned if you decide to go out and get one of these. Uh, the store, I, Harbor Freight, I went to only had one. This was it. That you know, I grabbed this one off the shelf. There wasn't any more. So we we're gonna. We're, I was gonna do an open box, and like always, I sort of jumped the gun. And yep, it's already out of the box. So let's take a quick look. And there's a couple of questions here that were on my mind. And I guess one of them is the. There's a new saw here from uh, yeah the gang at Tack Life. So the problem, the question was, will those blades with that 30 millimeter arbor hole, will they fit in this? And the answer to that is quickly, yes, they actually, it'll do those blades too. So that's good. It'll do my 12 inch, it'll do my 10 inch, it will do uh, any of the blades I've got on any of my saws in here. So really can't complain. Uh, it'll take time because you got to set this thing up to index and, you know, do your blades. But... I do think for the $47, I'd rather sharpen my own blades than have to drag them to a shop somewhere. Tell you the truth, the shop to get these blade, uh, my blades sharpened is probably a good 20, 20 miles away. So why not just you know do them yourself, save the gas money, whatever. It'll already pay for itself after I do like two blades, it's paid for. So not a bad deal. According to the service manual, RPM is 3,800, uh, just uh, for whatever reason. And it does run quiet, so it's actually, uh, doesn't even sound like a bad machine. Now the other, uh, the other part, or the other question was, how loud is it? Well, only one way to find out, right? How loud is it? That's a good question. Let's find out. Uh, I've got it plugged in. Yeah, everything's uh, not making contact anywhere. I can just turn it on. Let's just go. I'll tell you what. That is not loud. Actually, that's pretty quiet. So, I'd say overall, uh, hopefully, it's a uh, fairly decent uh, machine for what I need anyways. It does say professional. Harbor Freight. <laughs> I try not to laugh too hard about that one. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, hey. Yeah. Moving on. A <laughs> uh, point that I do want to make here in the manual here. Uh, it does show up to a 15 and a half inch blade or saw blade. So that's a big blade. Hey, that's pretty good. Again. So when you collapse everything out like this and uh, put, you know, put the cable up and whatever, the big downfall here, uh, we're going to have to store this thing from for long periods of time. We won't need it, you know, every day or every other day. Now I could go up and down the street, knock on doors, and see if anybody else needs a blade sharpened, and uh, that way I could make some money with the machine. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that. Nah. So, I'm going to do a, a little bit of a quick demo. I've got a really nasty old rusty blade here. I'm not going to sharpen it, but we're going to just take a look at the setup. This here is a rest area, and what that is is the blade is going to sit on top of that to help stabilize it when the, when the grinder comes in to hit it, which is back like that. So, the first thing I want to do, I guess, is uh, you'll have to turn this around. This comes into the uh, box actually backwards uh, facing the other way for packaging so once you get it you'll have to turn it around so you can set it up to index the blade so you just show you what a general setup would look like with this particular uh, blade I guess you know, you've got the little knob a washer then you've got a uh, spring then you got this cone the cone has to come down on top of the arbor hole in order to help center the blade up with this and it'll all make sense here in a second, I guess. Huh? Well, maybe it will. Let's see if we can get on her. There we go. 
And there's the cone. Actually, I should have probably left this tight. It'll be easier to deal with it right now until we get the rest of the setup. And, okay, the spring, flat washer, and the uh, little uh, knob. And when you, you don't want this super tight, so when you do this, bring it down about, I guess about half the spring compression, roughly, with the washer. You want it tight, but not stupid tight. You know, you want to be able to turn this thing around. And we'll, what you're looking for is you want to get this, in this particular type of blade, we want to really be uh, reasonably straight. So, let's see. The other thing I have to do, of course, is bring this in, because this is part of our setup right now. And as we bring it in, don't worry about this index right now. Yeah, it's not where it should be, but it's it's a it's pretty close. Yeah, it's close enough for uh, giggles. And what I'm going to do is turn the blade and bring this back and forth like this until I'm roughly about roughly about 90 degrees is what we're looking for here uh, on this particular type of blade. There are different blades out there. Be warned. Okay, so what will happen is I'll be able to turn this. And then come in and sharpen, you know, and then I'll be able to turn it and come in and sharpen. And again, if this spring is too tight, uh, you might want to back it off a little bit. But actually, it could be a little closer, I think, than that. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, just, yeah, just a little bit. I think we could actually go back a little more for, yeah, just for more like, yeah, right about in that range, roughly. Just well, right about there. And again, uh, well, that's still that's still not far enough. So let's come back the other way, I guess. Yeah, you want to go. And one of the things you're setting up, too, is you want to make sure you don't get to the bottom of the blade here. You want to just sort of come in and just, you know, be able to just touch the blade. So I'll back this up just a little bit. So it's just a little bit of spring pressure. And then like that, and sharpen, you know, and like that, and you're going to sharpen kind of thing. That's pretty basic, but that's basically a setup, so, you know, and it just gets, gives you an idea as to what you're looking for when you're setting up a small unit like this. Because different blades uh, have sometimes different angles to them, you know, you're going to have some dual angle blades that, you know, the teeth go back and forth with, so you can actually set the angle on here. Uh, that's going to be a bit tricky because you really you're going to have to figure out what that angle is. But the science is there. You can actually set this up so for angling for a blade to come in to sharpen on an angle. And you would do every other tooth, set the angle the other way, do the every other tooth. If it was if it was like a uh, you know one of those situations where the, the teeth are like this kind of thing. You know each tooth is has the other angle. So you do every other tooth, then you go around, set it up, do every other tooth again, so you get both sides of the blade. Hey, thanks for stopping by and yeah, that was the uh, circular saw blade sharpener. I wanted to point one other thing out. I have a table saw, a radial arm saw, and a chop saw. That may not, that word might be deceiving because all three of those blades can be sharpened and worked with on this machine. Thanks again for watching Coffee and Tools and that was the Harbor Freight circular saw blade sharpener.